Well, you're watching the Wildcaster and we really don't know how to describe what we just witnessed. I'm Alec White, he's Michael Lev, he's Justin Spears. Is it a new low? Is it a new, new low? Is it just a low? Is it rock bottom? There's so many <laughs> descriptions that we could call Arizona losing to NAU 21-19. Guys, I'm just gonna step out and let you fight for whatever you want to say here. Yeah, I didn't think that we'd be coming on the post game show today discussing whether this was worse than the ASU game last year, because I didn't think anything could be worse. It's debatable whether this is equally bad, slightly worse. I think Justin's going to take the side that it is worse because yep. of the quality of the opponent and just what was supposed to happen um, here tonight. Um, losing to NAU is bad. It is. It's really bad. And no matter what state you're in as a program and you know Jed Fish is kind of talking after the game about hey you know what as bad as this is like we're in it for the long haul right this is this is a long-term build this is a long-term process we hope to be here for a long time this is a game you got to win yeah this is a game you just have to win even if it had been 22 to 21 on a last second field goal you got to win this game and Arizona found a way to bungle it wasn't for lack of effort. I think it was very much a lack of execution. We'll get into some of the other issues that happened, but Justin, what do you think? You know, I, I thought Arizona was going to be on their way to snapping a 14-game losing streak, and things were going to be all right. It might not have been, you know, a lopsided victory for Arizona, but the way they had a control on this game in the first half, I just thought Arizona's going to win this game. There's just no way they're going to lose. They, as a matter of fact, the first points that they scored, which was a Lucas Haversick field goal, it was the first time that they led since Colorado game from a year ago. I thought, okay, they're going to pace their way to victory and everything's going to be all great. But then NEU fights back. They do a, you know, a quarterback rotation. Like They had, what, three quarterbacks in the game tonight? And, and so, ended with a true freshman. And ended with a true freshman quarterback. So they had their third string quarterback in who's a true freshman. He comes in and NAU just took care of business. You know, and, and a big part of it was a lot of miscues for Arizona. Even though the Wildcats had some takeaways, right? They had they had some picks, they had some fumbles. You know, defensively, we all talked about this at the beginning of the game. They did everything right defensively. It was just the offense. Will Plummer getting, you know, his second collegiate start couldn't move and you know we didn't see Gunnar Cruz in the game so they installed Jordan McLeod there towards the end Jordan McLeod gave them a, a chance to tie the game late and they couldn't convert the two-point conversion then Arizona loses 21 to 19 but I will say this I was I always thought that Arizona was going to find a way to win this game even when they came back and and tried to go for the two-point conversion I just had this hunch that Arizona was going to win but now here we are talking about Arizona losing to NAU for the first time since 1932. And I say it's not rock bottom for the program because I think that ASU lost just the way the Kevin Sullivan era ended. Yeah. That The way the players looked in that game I thought was rock bottom. They just had no fight. At least the players tonight – on the defensive side of the ball and on special teams, they gave some sort of energy and some sort of this fight. This is more but, of an inexcusable loss than the Arizona uh, State one. I, 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 wouldn't, I yeah. wouldn't say that because mm -hmm. Arizona was a 26-and-a-half point favorite. This is an FCS program, and I asked Stanley Berryhill after the game, like, do you guys you know, compare this loss or is there a similar feeling? And he said, no, we don't, we don't compare it, you know, the, the feelings. We're on to this season. But it's an FCS program. Stanley Berryhill called – an elite FCS and, and yes, they, they got right? they, they got their butts kicked the first two games. <laughs> they were 0 2 and had been outscored 76 to 23. They didn't have their starting quarterback, right? They took a five hundred thousand dollar check to come down here and play, and they end up winning the game. That it, it's a worse loss than the, so than the ASU game. In from that ago. regard, you could you could make that case. I mean, I would say that it's not as bad because I mean they just kind of flat out quit against ASU. Yeah. That game was on national TV. I mean, it was just a complete embarrassment in, in every single way. Um, tonight, it was just mistakes, right? They're up 13 to nothing late in the second quarter, and Will Plummer throws a pick six. You know, as I was saying to Alec before uh, we started recording this, like, that is a play can't you just it. can't nope. make. Jed talked a lot in the postgame about the quarterback's understanding game situations, right? I mean, these guys have just shown, like, kind of zero awareness, you know? Um, collectively so far and who knows what's gonna happen next with the quarterback situation but knowing the game situation 
throw the, you know, if it, you don't see it for sure, throw it out of bounds. Run. Anything but, anything but you that result. right in the NAU defender's It was, a, it it was, was as right easy as can be. Um, and that kind of shifted the momentum in the game. Yeah. Um, and and the, other, oh, the other couple things, um, they had three takeaways, but I think Jed said they scored three points off of the three takeaways. We'll have to, you know, double check that later, but didn't capitalize on the turnovers. That was a big factor. And then the red zone again. Yep. Red zone offense is bad. Um, they ended up with a pair of field goals of, I think, 31 and 24 yards or yeah. something. When you're kicking field goals at that length, what does that mean? It means you're not punching the ball in. Yeah. Um, they had 106 rushing yards in this game. I thought they'd have two they got rushers. got rushed by NAU. Yeah, I again. thought they'd have two rushers go over 100 yards individually. They barely got over 100 yards. They should be dominating the line of scrimmage against a team like this. But, you know, it's like your problems are still your problems. Coming into the season, what did we say? We're the two biggest weaknesses for Arizona this year. Offensive line and quarterback. Here we are heading into Pac-12 play. Offensive line can't move anybody, and we have no idea who the quarterback's going to be. <laughs> um, uh, real quick, Alec, I'm just going to say, yeah. you know, Jetfish, what's his the, the main slogan that he's instilled into this program? It's personal. It's personal. personal. Yeah. It's personal. And San Diego State last week, their their final score tweet was, hey. we took it personally. Bless you, Alex. Tonight, you. yeah, bless you, man, my friend. Um, tonight, after AS, or after NAU beats Arizona, while we're waiting for the elevator to go down, NAU coaches are screaming, hollering, yelling. It's personal. It's personal. We run this state. It's personal. And it, it was a very big moment there for was, them. Yeah, there were some other words. Program. There, there were some other words that they said that we can't words, repeat. But, no, no, no. but here's but. you know what, what life was like for Arizona the last time they lost to NAU. A.W. Farwick was their head coach, and Arizona's team captain was Bill Davies. Okay. And Don't even know. NAU didn't even go by NAU, right? They went by the the Northern Arizona Teachers. At Northern college. Arizona Teaching College. Teaching I think. College. Yes, Northern Arizona State Teaching College, I believe. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. History. That was, just, that was even before I was born. Okay? So <laughs> and we, we even made before some my <laughs> parents, even like before my parents were born. So it's been a long time. Uh, I guess the question is like, now what? You know, are we are we looking at an 0 12 season yeah. here? Can they turn things around? Like, what what can change? What realistically can change during the course of the season to provide some semblance of hope, some semblance of optimism? Uh, you know, keeping the recruiting class. Intact. That starts that, to become you know, an issue. That becomes a huge issue yeah. if you lose games like this. I don't think it's an issue. Because you know. now you're telling all these guys, look what's going on. You can come to Arizona and you can play right away. You could build the winning yeah. culture. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Well, they, they better bring in some offensive linemen because that if you can't move the ball on the ground against an FCS team, that's a, that's a, that's a red flag to me. A major red flag. We saw that about the two-point conversion. Two... NAU players came in right in Jordan McLeod's face. Couldn't get anything on the ball. In Arizona, it was it took three different tries because there was Arizona took a timeout to prevent a false start. Uh, Great then, job and by it, Chris Ball, right? Then yeah. NAU called a timeout to get a second and third read, and then on that third one is when they needed the like uh, they Jordan needed McLeod. like the value oop or something on, on that last play. You know, <laughs> it was sort Drayton. of like a, it was sort of an it was sort of an NBA you know get the look call timeout kind of kind of sequence of events and yeah they didn't have DeAndre to come in there and slam it down. How can Arizona salvage the season though? That 1932 season that we're referring to yeah. the last time NAU beat Arizona? U of A beat ASU, right? That's always a good way to, sure. to salvage a season. And ASU you know, lost tonight to BYU. So, so you know, there's that. I don't I don't know what I'll, else okay, to tell Arizona fans right now. Here's what I'll say. And I've said this to you guys off air before, but the Pac twelve ain't great. Okay. Colorado lost thirty to nothing to Minnesota. Right, ASU lost to BYU. Um, Utah lost to San Diego State, which uh, you know San Diego State also beat Arizona. But it's not like this is the SEC West, okay? The, the question is, how far away is are the Wildcats from from these other teams? Well, I mean, I think I said it in um, my five takeaways last week. They're light years away from Oregon, who they play next. I mean, what do you think the point spread's going to be in that game? I had said 34 and a half. It might be more. Closer to 40. I don't know. It might be around 40, which is kind of crazy. But would anyone, I mean, how dumb are we? 
those of us who, <laughs> we picked those Arizona of us who laid two weeks in a yeah, row to win. We, we took, um, we laid, what was it, 23 was our kind of official line. It started line. at 23 and yeah. then it moved to 27 at kickoff. Yeah, we took a team that had lost 14 straight games and we laid 23 points. And now it's 15 games. Arizona's going to be going to Oregon next week. We still don't know who the quarterback is going to be, Jed Fish said. He's tempted to play uh, Jordan McLeod more, given what he showed there at the end, but he said, I got to look at the film how first. Did, how did Jed so, look to you guys when he came in? He looked kind of shocked. Didn't he looked he look lost. Pale? Like, he looked like he was behind on his mortgage payments. <laughs> <laughs> he was he came, it was sort of like a big exhale, and he, can't, he looked like he was in a state of shock. Like, as bad as we all knew this whole situation was, like I don't think any of us thought it was this bad. I don't think he thought it was going to be this hard. It, there was the realization moment that the rebuild is going to take a lot longer than maybe he anticipated yeah. or that he even sold uh, to everybody else because it is not a one-year Band-Aid that we're looking at. It's a multiple-year thing. Yeah, that's where Arizona football is at right now. And I, I, don't, I don't think the recruiting class, nothing is going to affect that. I think this is their kind of their sales pitch to everybody. Like, you can come in, play as true freshmen, and, and help us rebuild this thing. Yep. So it's, a, it's certainly a low for Arizona, but, man, they got, they got, they got ways to go. Well, we're going to see what happens next. Lev, you get the honors of flying out to Eugene, Oregon yeah, cool. for next week's game. Uh, Justin and I hey, will, will be hey, on it's our better, couch. It's better than there being no games at all, right? It is. Isn't it? Better than... Mm, mm, I don't know. We'll, we'll think uh, about that one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll have some podcasts. Uh, you know, we'll have greater discussion <laughs> about that. If you want to hear more about what we think about this, tune in to Monday's and Thursday's podcast break down the Arizona Wildcats. Uh, but for now, he's Justin Spears. He's Michael Love. I'm Alec White. You're watching the Wildcaster, and we'll see you sometime next week. See you when we see you.